Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Landscape Photography Show. My name is Kevin Rowe, and uh, I'm really excited to have a repeat guest back with us, one of our favorites, Ray Billcliffe. Ray is, uh, one thing you'll find out during this show is Ray is very passionate about photography, and and uh, we love listening to him, and, and you'll probably be ready to go out and take some pictures uh, when the show is over. Um, I live in South Jordan, Utah, and I am a mortgage uh, loan officer and a uh, photographer in in my off time, and I enjoy uh, going off into the mountains and taking as many pictures as I can of nature. Um, why don't we go over and have uh, Bill, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Bill, hi everybody. My name is Bill Wood. I'm an amateur photographer from Columbus, Ohio, and I especially like landscape photographs. Uh, I have a tendency to go to the southwest uh, in southern Utah and Arizona and uh, just enjoy taking photographs. And I'm a moderator at the uh, Landscape Photography Show and enjoying it immensely, and I'm proud to be here. Thank you. Great, thanks, Bill. And if you've uh, submitted a photo to the to the uh, show starters, um, you probably got a comment from Bill. He's he's great. He loves commenting on photos, and we appreciate it. Thank you, Margaret. You need Hi. no introduction, but go ahead. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Margaret Tompkins. I'm in uh, sunny Kansas City. It's about zero degrees and headed down. Um, so it's winter time here, but when it, the weather cooperates, I love getting out and taking uh, photographs. And I'm kind of like Bill. I like to head to the southwest, uh, Utah, Arizona, and uh, just take in the beauty that's there and try to uh, photograph it. Uh, strictly an amateur, I'm retired, so I can kind of hack around at things and enjoy doing that. And uh, on Google+, Plus, you'll find me in the landscape photography theme and also the community. And uh, next, we have our guest panelist uh, here this evening, Pamela. Hi. Uh, I am Pamela from Reynoso, and you will find me in the landscape photography community. Um, I am a moderator there in the critique section, as well as the macro and details, and kind of jump in different places sometimes. Um, I live just outside San Francisco, and I have, I'm married to an artist husband, and we have five children, and so nothing's ever dull around here. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks, Pamela. And uh, just a note here, uh, Ray. Ray, we couldn't get his webcam working, so you're just going to hear his voice and see his beautiful pictures. But uh, he's there. Go ahead and say hello, Ray. Hey, good evening to everybody. Oh, good morning, as it's two o'clock in the morning here in the United Kingdom. Yeah. Okay. Um, the well, weather here is uh, really miserable. It's not snowing, but it's raining, and it's very, very cold. Um, but that won't stop me getting on the beach again in the morning. Um, I hope you like my pictures that I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm just going to try and tell you um, some of the things that you should be looking for to shoot when you're out there on the beach. Great, and we'll get back to you in just a minute there, Ray. Um... We appreciate you coming on. So uh, quickly, what we're going to do is the portion of the show where we feature, um, we each feature one of the photographs that was posted uh, to the show. So if you're if you're new to this, we mm -hmm. ask that you post a one photo. Well, we've changed that. We used to let you post five. We've changed that to one. So make note of that. And this time our theme was beaches. So. My choice was Eric Castleton, and uh, I just really loved the the tones. The uh, he's got a little bit of a uh, long exposure on the waves there. Uh, perfect alignment with the uh, art and the and the rock. I know that has a name, but I can't remember it. So everyone knows it, and he's he's captured it perfectly. So mm -hmm. well done, Eric. Beautiful. Margaret, this was your choice. Uh, this is my selection by uh, Carrie Cole, and I just love the um, simplicity of this, the wonderful colors in the sky, and then how that tree on the beach just kind of uh, balances it all out. 
Uh, it's just such a dreamlike uh, photograph. I fell in love with this, and um, uh, that was definitely my pick for a show starter. Just love it. Beautiful. Makes you just want to sit under that tree, huh? It does. That's where I'm headed. <laughs> and Pamela, this was your choice. Yes, this is by Sabine Kaufman, and I just loved the soft tonalities all throughout the photo, you know, the blues and the, you know, the cools and the warms, and I loved how there was so much texture in the water, you know, um, sort of underneath the smoothness, if that makes sense. Um, it's just, I can envision myself just sitting there watching the sunset, and to me, the best photos capture that. Yeah, really glad you chose that one. Fantastic photo. Okay, and Bill, this was your choice. It was. It's uh, by Wojciech Tolman. I hope I'm not uh, messing up his name too much. But uh, I really like the fact that when you first look at it, you can't tell exactly what it is. It's like an illusion. Then once you get into it, then you realize that it's a, a bunch of um, items on a beach. But I like the fact that it could be interpreted a number of different ways. And I, and I love the lighting of the picture. It's just wonderful. Great. That's yeah, I think, my choice. Yeah, great choice. I think that was probably the most unique uh, photo we had submitted. So really like it. OK, and Ray, this was your choice. Yeah, this is uh, my kind of picture. It's uh, either a sunset or a sunrise. I'll hazard a guess that it's a sunrise. Um, but out of the way, the, the little rock is being picked out of the front and the, the pool of water around it. Uh, my passion is sh shooting the light. And you see the way the light is around the uh, this little pool at the front and it's sort of glistening on that little rock. A little bit of uh, long exposure to smooth out the water. Uh, this is by Gary King. Um, well done, Gary. That's a tremendous picture and I love it very much. Great. Perfect. Okay, and then Margaret, why don't we go over to you and uh, you can uh, introduce Ray and get us going here. Um, it's my pleasure. Um, we have uh, with us tonight Ray Billcliffe, and I've known Ray ever since I got onto Google Plus. Um, he's the uh, moderator or creator of a number of great themes on uh, Google Plus, and uh, he's really known uh, as one of our very best uh, nature and uh, wildlife and landscape photographers. Uh, he gets up really at like 2 o'clock in the morning and he goes out and takes pictures on the beach and just captures such wonderful uh, colors and imagery. And I always learn something when I'm listening to Ray. So it's really, we're thrilled to have you here, Ray. And I know that this is going to be another great experience for all of us. Glad you could be here. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm sorry you can't see me, but uh, hopefully you can see my picture. Can everybody see that picture of the beach? Yeah. Yes, right. Yeah. Okay, just making sure you can see it. Mm -hmm. um, when I post a picture, it usually says on the top, uh, pentography from my favorite beach. Uh, this is it. This is uh, Whitley Bay on um, the northeast coast of England. Uh, this is a picture that was taken uh, around about September time. The tide is not is going out. It's not quite fully out. There's still a lot of rocks get exposed there. But if you look over on the left, right at where the, the, the beach and there's some little people walking there, right in the corner, you can see how far the tide actually comes in. All of this down the front where, where the, the people are standing on the rocks all becomes water and there's very little sand. Uh, shown at high tide. And my lighthouse there, St. Mary's on the, on the island, uh, we are in the distance. And obviously the, the coast carries on around the corner with some beautiful rocky coves, uh, Coleywell Bay, and uh, Seaton Spruce is up that way as well. So I've got a really, really interesting beach. Um, every time the tide goes out and comes back in, the beach seems to change. Uh, different times of the year, we get a lot more green of the seaweed. And uh, the rocks will show up better when you get out there in the sunrise or the sunset. This is on the northeast coast, so I get sunrises on this beach. 
course, if you were out there in California, you'd probably be getting the, uh, the sunsets on your beach. I know not everybody can get a beach where they live if you live in the mountains, but I'm sure you've got lakes and uh, rivers and they all have little beaches around them. Things to look for. For you seaweed is the first thing you will find on most beaches. This seaweed that you see lying around here got washed in from a storm, and the storm usually lasts two or three hours, and the sea calms down again and leaves this stuff lying around on the uh, on the beach. This is a long exposure shot. Um, just looking at my exit data for the shot. This is a four second exposure at F11. And um, that's really smoothed out the water. If the, if the water is fairly rough, you'll need a shorter time with an exposure at, four, at uh, four seconds. It's usually enough, four to ten seconds. But if the sea is fairly calm to start with, then you may have to go into 30 seconds or even a couple of minutes to get it to, uh, to really smooth out. <clears throat> This is a, something to shoot for when the uh, clouds are there and uh, you sort of done the landscape and the, and the bit is to look around for the pebbles. A picture you saw from Gary, uh, from Gary King. Similar kind of thing, he was shooting the water around the pebble and shooting the light. But look at the texture over on the right hand side of the sand. I mean, Pay attention to the focus, and uh, it's obviously I focused this white on the rock itself, and so you've got that band of sharpness that runs across what, the bottom third of the picture, and the rest is all smoothed and blurred, uh, blurred out. Again, I'm shooting for the light here, and it's a dawn shot. There's the dawn the sun is way over on the right-hand side, as you can see from the long shadow that's been cast by this little pebble. This is actually a pebble. It's about... Uh, size of your fist, so it's not very big, and uh, I love shooting things like this. They get Ray. the light shining in the water. Yeah, Ray, I think this is a wonderful picture and a great example of uh, not getting too uh, focused on the grand landscape sometimes. I really love the picture. I agree, it's very nice. You know, it's sometimes it's the, the littlest things are the most beautiful, you know, sometimes I just sit down on the rocks and I just stare at the ground around me and something will catch my eye. I'll get down on the ground near it and get the camera really focused in close and then look for the light. Always look for the light and the shadows. <clears throat> of course, you know if you shoot this in the middle of the day, uh, when the sun is directly overhead, there won't be any shadows or very, very slight shadows. So the early morning hours and the late afternoon, is the time to be uh, out shooting the beach. <clears throat> this is a landscape shot. As you can see, the far distance, you've got a ship on the horizon there. It's coming in towards the river, River, river Tyne, which is down by where I live. And then we've got this little valley between the rocks there, coming across the water, and we've got some little pebbles in there, and the seaweed on this rock at the front and those little line of shells. <clears throat> this is, uh, you'll have to excuse my voice because uh, I started this with a bad cold and I have a sore throat, so I'm probably going to lose my voice. Um, those pebbles that you see in the water, um, you only see in those because I used a polarizing filter. And it's, that's very important when you're shooting things that are wet. If I hadn't used it, this would be all glary white, those great light gray bits you see on the seaweed at the front, and uh, they would just be uh, burnt out completely. <coughs> but sure, I'm sure how interesting the, the rocks and the seaweed can be, and as the light changes, this is a, a late afternoon shot, about an hour before this, the sun will set off to the right. Ray? Yep. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how to use a polarizer? I think a lot of us have a, a problem with overusing it, and we get the the sky looks very unusual. Um, can you give us some, some insights there, please? 
Four lines and further, you can kind of imagine that this, I'm looking south, so the sun will be setting off to my right. Uh, polar eyes and filters only work if the sun is off at a 90 degree angle, off to your left or to your right. It won't work directly behind you, and it won't work when it's directly in front. <coughs> That's if you're shooting with a sun in the picture. But I'm focused down here on the seaweed at the front here. This is my foreground. And you have to just... It, the polarizing filter changes the, 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 the glare of the picture ever so slightly as you turn it. And you've got to decide where it's just about right. And uh, you can take, I always take three or four shots. I mean, I probably took 10 shots of this particular scene uh, and chose this one when I got home. Uh, so don't just take one picture, then hope you got it right. And then uh, go home and find you didn't, because then you've got to come back again, which is fun in itself. Um, but polarizing filters, I have one on my camera, and it's there all of the time. It never comes off. Even when I'm using ND filters, they go on the top of the polarizer. <coughs> Thank you. Close up shot of some uh, <coughs> seashells and seaweed. Again, shooting for the light. Again, the colors of the dawn. <coughs> I'm not sure what that band is along the top of the rock there, you see that? It comes down and follows. How would it focus? I, I love this one, Ray. I just love this. I love the little shells. Gorgeous. Oh, this one here. Yeah, yeah. The colors are nice. That's the, that's the sun. Uh, this is a bright red dawn. You, you have seen some of the shots I put up of the red skies we get. We haven't had a lot recently, but... Um, if I don't get out there every day, I won't get the one we do get. So if I go out every morning, and um, recently it's been pretty pretty miserable. Okay, and I think a lot of beaches around the world have uh, wooden posts stuck in from old piers. Uh, not quite sure what these two are doing there. There's another three or four in the line. Been there as long as I can remember. But it offers a, a, an interesting focal point in the lighthouse in the background, cut takes your eye uh, out to the distance. Again, shooting for the light and the shadows and the colours. Um, and you should have fun with your beach photography. Just shoot hundreds and hundreds of pictures and then when you get back to your computer, you go through them, you'll see the good ones and the bad ones. And Normally it's the composition, it's not the colours and the light, it's if the composition is wrong, the picture's going to look wrong. So you can learn a lot by the pictures you throw away. And I do throw away a lot of pictures. Don't think every picture I take is great. It's not. I keep about three or four out of every hundred. Another great shot for the light and the shadows. Um, another dawn, the sun is almost uh, just slightly off center to, the, uh, to where my camera is. <coughs> Being a little patient and waiting for that little white foamy water to come in and not cover over the pebbles. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat is getting worse. If I stop talking, I'm just going to go straight and put a slideshow on. I'm all going to take over for me. Okay, here's yeah, just the, the big panoramic view. If you look at these houses, there are houses there. Um, just about where the red stops on the, uh, the beginning of the promenade, there's a street goes up there, and I'm a two-minute walk right up that street. So I can be on this beach uh, with, just in a few minutes. Uh, catching the sun as it just comes over the horizon. Um, <clears throat> but what I liked about this was the, the, the shadows of the, the houses being cast just where the water starts. And this little line of rocks at the front gives you a leading line Take your eye out into the picture. <coughs> Again, Paul Royce and Phil, I was there all the time on my, on my camera. <coughs> Can you see the, uh, this picture where the lighthouse is? Well, 
this one's the other side of that light up now I've come around the corner and um, this is a just a, a small place called Hartley Bay uh, the tide has gone out and left his bits of seaweed uh, stuck into the sand and uh, it makes a pleasant picture you can see the stairs that you come down on uh, the top right hand side there and this rock here is about four to five feet high so you clamber down onto the beach and the tide goes out a lot further because all of this where you now see water is rocks when the tide is fully out very interesting place uh, the cliffs fall down and break almost constantly there's always something falling off um, so you've got to be careful if you walk too close you might get a rock land up on your head so I try to keep away from the edge of that cliff and here's a uh, beach scene that you will see very very often a uh, seagull there with its mouth open very startled uh, me trying to sneak up on it and catch it when it was sitting uh, another good tip when you're on the beach where you want to hope to cap capture birds is uh, be sure that you've got your shutter speed at least at, at uh, 1 500th of a second so when the bird does take off you don't just get a blurry picture also, the 500 of a second allows me to freeze this water. So at the front, you've got all these sharp little bubbles. And um, again, catching the light, and the, the light is there with a shadow for the, from the bird. But the water itself gives you the leading line into the picture. And that white foamy stuff. Um, it's, it's a typical simple beach. It's an easy shot to take. Um, but again, it can uh, make or break it by where the bird happens to be. If you take that bird out, that's a pretty boring picture. A rough day on the beach. Uh, and this is where it's good to try to get some people. Uh, people give perspective to the picture. This is a 40-foot wall that runs along the back, and these waves do sometimes break way over the top of that wall. And... Uh, because a lot of spray gets across the cars that are driving past. We got a couple here walking on the on the beach, and uh, the waves make it very very interesting. Again, be patient when you're taking these shots and take lots of them. I waited till that wave broke on, on the uh, against the wall before I snapped the picture. I have a whole bunch of these people, these two people walking along there, but this was the best of the lot of uh, pictures that I took. And the blackness of that wall sort of gives a nice backdrop to the uh, to the picture. Again, doing a little bit of uh, slow the picture down. This is about a one quarter of a second, maybe a one fifth of a second, and just uh, slow the water so you get the movement of a little wave coming in towards the seaweed, focusing on the pebbles at the front. Um, typical beach picture, uh, a lot of splashing going on. If you can look at the top right hand corner, you might just see where the water's uh, coming down. Um, be prepared to get wet when you take a picture like this. I'm sitting down on the ground and this water is running up my trouser legs. And I'm always wet when I'm on the beach. I've never stayed dry for very long. So don't be afraid to get your feet in the water. You can always dry off a little bit later. <laughs> Because you're trying to get the pictures that uh, nobody else gets, that's why they look different. This picture here is a one that I have taken thousands of times, and this is the best one I ever took. And this was just recently, just a few weeks ago. <coughs> there's always seagulls, there's always waves breaking. Um, but getting the light just right, uh, this is about 4.30, the sun is behind me. Uh, it's going to set in about 20, 30 minutes behind the cliff. And the birds were just in the right position, swimming around. They're diving down and trying to catch little fishes. But the secret of picture like this is try to get the lines of the waves going out to the distance as each one is breaking. Um, and I did this, as I say, over the, over the past couple of years, a thousand times. And it, they hardly ever work, but this one actually did. So patience, guys. Uh, just keep shooting and shooting, and uh, you never know what you're going to get when you get home. Another shot taken just as the sun's going to set. You can see how it's lighting up this little 
line of rocks in the top left on the horizon. The lighthouse on the other corner is way in the distance, and these little rocks in the water smoothed out. I think this is about an eight second exposure. A 20 second exposure, F13. Take it with my uh, wide angle lens at uh, 20 millimeter. Um, I don't know if anybody has uh, ND filters and you tries to use them. Uh, it's, a, it's a little learning curve. There are tables you can get, but it's, it's probably better just to try for experience. <coughs> I would have taken a few pictures of this. I would have done it first at about six seconds, then at about 12 seconds, and maybe even 30 seconds or to a minute, and then select the one that, uh, that sort of looks the best. Some are overdone, some are underdone. But it is the ND filter that allows you the long exposure. Um, and uh, remember trying to get your focus onto the foreground. There should always be a foreground, a middle ground, and a background in uh, good composition. Typical shot for night beats. There's always a couple of ships out there waiting to come into the river. Uh, this picture is taken to emphasize these cumulus clouds at the top as part of the composition. And um, as I say, the couple of ships, you've got the breaking waves there. And uh, right down on the front, you've got this little ripple uh, coming in towards the camera. The camera is usually, when I take pictures like this, is about two feet off the ground. So I have the legs spread down. Remember, you've got to push the, the leg, your legs of your tripod. And everybody should be using the tripod. I'd never take a picture without the one. Push it down into the sand because as the water comes around the legs, the, the camera will move. So make sure you push it right down or stand it on a rock or something. I hope everybody does take a tripod out when you go taking pictures because not only does it keep your camera still, it slows you down and makes you think a little bit better about what it is you're doing. I uh, see a lot of photographers out there just shooting hard and telling them they're clicking everywhere, and I don't think it works. But it might work for you, it doesn't work for me. I get too, too quick when I don't have my tripod. Beautiful dawn shot in my lighthouse and this big rock. Um, do you know what makes this picture is the wet sand and the way the, the rising sun is bouncing off it. Uh, and even all these light patches. I'm in love with shooting the light. I'm always trying to catch it. And as you see, there's a little seagull right there casting a little shadow. And near the, the, the posts. I don't know what these wooden posts are, but I've taken quite a few pictures of those. I must have 10,000 pictures of this lighthouse, and they're all different. And you wouldn't think you get, uh, you know, you, I sometimes hear photographers, because this is a popular place, saying, well, that's it, I've got enough pictures of this lighthouse. I can never get enough pictures of this lighthouse. But I can take a sit there and take this picture over and over as the sun is rising in the sky. I was probably there before that it even got above the horizon, uh, shooting pictures. And when I get to them, I've probably got about 40 or 50 gigabits of pictures to go through. And I say most of them will get uh, deleted. But the fun is in taking them, guys, right? It's not the finished product that's been out there in the, in the light and taking them. I posted this recently on Google Plus. Um, it's not a brilliant picture as such. It's just nice to have this contract between the cool and the wall. Uh, this water was reflected a bit of blue sky. I used a little saturation to cheat a little bit. Um, but it's a color, it's, I did it for the colors and the light, and this shadow being casted by the rock is what caught my attention. It's always the shadows, as you can see. This is a sunset picture. The sunset is uh, way off to my right or slightly behind me, and it's cast in this lovely shadow. Otherwise, not a brilliant picture. It's great for the color and the light. <coughs> and then when my tide goes out, I get these lots of little rock pools. And uh, they're full of seaweed. Look how many different kinds of seaweed, different colours. Um, but you wouldn't say none of this 
if it wasn't for the polarizer. Now, if you look at this picture starting up near the, the top left hand side as it comes down, there's a blue line. And that's just something to do with the polarizing filter, but I'm not quite figuring out what it was. But you've got the blues here, and then it goes very sharply. So I don't know why that blue line is there. But in my mind, it doesn't matter. Again, shooting for the sand, the textures in the sand, the light and the shadow. I'm sitting down here on the rock, just waiting for the tide to come in. It's uh, washes up the beach and then comes over this bit of seaweed and then goes back out again. But this beautiful light shining on the seaweed and on the rock and giving the texture in the sand. I love pictures like this. Uh, and it's so peaceful to be sitting out there taking them. Ray, this is, uh, I think, what I like most about your photographs is, is the wet sand. Uh, yeah, and gorgeous. the wonderful light that you capture there, and sometimes the great texture like this is. Uh, it almost looks like it's fabric, um, you know, but it's the wet sand. Uh, just marvelous, marvelous details in these photographs. You know, this little bit of sand around this pool, next time the tide comes in, the waves will bash around a little bit, and the tide will go out, and this will all change. It will become different. Uh, the pool will be gone, or it might be bigger, uh, be a different shape. But look at the shadow being cast by the rock here, right out into the sand. I mean, this is what makes the picture. And uh, the, the highlights of the, the seaweed itself in the water. This is not me. This is Mother Nature putting the magic there. I'm just clicking the camera and taking the picture. And it's all about getting the, you know, you get the focus right. It's a narrow depth of field. I don't want this really sharp on where the sea is. All the focus needs to be right around this piece of seaweed and the texture of the sand. <clears throat> so I shoot a lot of my beach pictures to that 5.6 or F4, unless I want the distance in. And then I never, very rarely do I ever get above F11. F8 is usually the magic number for me. This uh, around the other side of the lighthouse in this Hartley Bay. Um, different times of the year, you get different seaweeds. Sometimes there's no seaweed on these rocks, and then for two or three months, the seaweed is everywhere. <clears throat> nice landscape shot. The cliffs here make a nice picture leading down to the lighthouse, peeping out there, and the waves would come in and break right up on the rocks up here. So it's the stormy waves that make these rocks collapse. Ray, I have a question about focusing. Yeah. On, like on the on the last pic, uh, image you just had, it looks as if focus is perfect from right up near to way out far, and yet you say you don't go above f11. Where where exactly are you focusing in order to get such beautiful depth of field? Okay, I'm looking at my, uh, this is my Sony A77, it's F8 at 150 for the second, ISO 100. So F8 is, a, is the, for me, is the magic point. And this is shot with my 1650 millimeter at 18 millimeters. So for a 50 millimeter lens, F8 is usually the sweet spot where sharpness is concerned. And I'm focusing, um, I love you. Can you see my mouse pointer? Yes, I can. Yeah, okay. I'm focusing right on this rock here, which is about one third of the way into the picture. Um, you know, when you focus, you get a 75% uh, into the picture sharpness and about 25% coming back towards uh, the front of the picture. Well, the F8 with my 50 millimeter lens, um, and again, the focal lens for this lens is about six feet. So these uh, rocks right at the very front with the seaweed on the beach are about five feet away from my camera. The focal distance of the lens is very important. Um, if I step back, say another six feet, these ones at the front would be blurry. The centers would still be sharp because that's where my focus point is, but the front would blur away. Um, there are tables you can find um, on Google about focal distances of various lenses, but for the 50 millimeter, it's about six feet of the feet. 
to anything more than six feet at the front of your picture will go blurry. So you, yeah, uh, people look up hyper hyper focal distance. Yeah, hyper focal differences. Yeah. Uh, it's not something you need to get into. You shoot about one third of the way into the picture. Uh, anything with the front is blurry, you can crop it out. It's not a big deal. Um, but you get into the circles of confusion and all that stuff, and all it is is just confusion. It won't even go there. It's not that important. As long as you focus about one third of the picture, you're going to get it just about right. And typically, um, something that I found in it, it depends on the lens, but typically, the wider angle your lens, the more that's going to be in focus at that, and you're able to use those. Uh, more wide open uh, f-stops. Um, so if you've got a fairly wide angle lens, then you can. It it helps a lot to not have to worry about uh, what's in focus and what's out. Yeah, that's Thanks. Good, and I, I do a lot of my shooting with my 50 millimeter, and sometimes I come down to my 10-20. Okay, mm -hmm. these pylons are what you saw. Uh, in front of the lighthouse, the lighthouse is just off picture to my right hand side here, and the calls way out to the lighthouse. Don't know what these pylons were in the old days, but they obviously had a reason uh, for being there. But I shot this again for the shadows and the light. This is a long exposure. Uh, check the exit data here, here. This is 10 seconds, but this is f22, and the reason I made f22 is to try to get the slow shutter speed. That's the only reason I'm at F22. It's got nothing to do with trying to get the distance in focus. It's purely to open the lens right up so I can get the shutter speed to come down because um, I can't get my ISO any lower. The ISO is at 50. <coughs> and this is without an ND filter. So it's, uh, it's sunset, as you can see by the color. The sunset is uh, setting up here over on my left hand shoulder. Um, so that's why it's F22, and um, that's probably why you can see the chimneys way in the distance and the lights of uh, this is Blythe Harbour, way way in the distance there. But I wasn't shooting for that; I was shooting for these pylons. All my focus is right here at the front of the picture. Look at the light over on the right-hand bottom side. This light shining in the water, gorgeous. Back on my favourite beach at Willie Bay, I'll have just off the picture there where the houses are. And this green seaweed we get for about six weeks, uh, late summer, end of August, September, and this green is everywhere, and then it disappears, and we just come back to the bare red rocks again. <coughs> but I get lots of clouds on my beach, so quite often I come out here and you can't see any blue sky, it's just dark grey clouds which is what we've been having lately, lots of rain. But I still go out in the rain, you can get uh, plastic bag covers from Amazon for just a few pennies. Um, and I always have one in my pocket because you never know when you're going to need it. So he says my lens uh, and my camera are weatherproof, whatever that means. But I wouldn't risk it. I mean, what's weatherproof? <clears throat> Another gorgeous shot of the rising sun is very, very bright. And again, shooting for the, the light on this bit of seaweed and the rocks. And um, these red skies haven't been showing themselves recently. It's not a particularly good picture, apart from the colour, uh, this bit of seaweed sticking up. If you take that seaweed away, that's a pretty boring picture. But I like the colour and the light on it. Sometimes I shoot purely just for the light, and I don't care about the composition. But I do it for my pleasure, not your pleasure. I don't care if you look at my pictures and don't like them. I like them. Another one is sort of set, and it was nice of this gentleman to be walking along the rocks. He's got a bag on his back, so I think he's a photographer. He's, uh, although I don't know, he would be taking pictures of the rising sun if he was, but he would he, was good there to give a little bit of depth to the picture compared to this big rock uh, over on the right. If you take him out, this would be a, not a good picture with that uh, big rock in, the, uh, in, the, in the, the water there. But my focus again is right down here on the front. 
and uh, looking for the light and the shadows. But next to have a little guy there wet where the sun is, so I moved the camera a little bit so that I was in line and, and got him uh, right where the sun was rising. Of course, if you don't go out at dawn, then uh, you won't get a picture like that. But you'll probably get a sunset if you're on the other coast. Sometimes my sun comes up at 4.30 in the morning, so I need to be out very early. But right now it's coming up around 7.20, so I get a bit of a lie in. This is the camera in the same place as that last shot, just looking further up the beach. And uh, you can see how black it was behind me. The sky is really overcast and dark and just broken up on the horizon. And again, I'm shooting this for the shadow of this big rock sticking up in the water. That rock is about six feet tall, so it's fairly big. And the lighthouse way, way out there in the distance. This is a little bit further along. We come to the end of the beach and then you get up on the promenade and then promenade drops down onto these rocks. And uh, got these stormy uh, clouds in the sky that it's uh, recently been raining and um, all the ships out there on the horizon. This is a typical kind of picture for me in the colouring because there wasn't a lot of uh, bright light to give the colours. <clears throat> I love the texture in the water. Yeah, yeah, that the the waves are nice. Um, you know, they some days it looks grey, sometimes it's a nice blue and a greeny colour. But I like shooting waves. But I like shooting rocks and pebbles and all kind of stuff. I'm sitting down here on the pebbles, just focusing on different places, trying to see what I'm going to get when I get home. Long exposure to probably around about 15 seconds to really smooth that water out. And um, bring the, uh, uh, another thing about long exposure, they do tend to bring up the colours a little bit better. And these pebbles are all kinds of colours, blues and reds and yellows. And you, if you're not in a hurry, you can sit there and uh, probably shoot 20, 30 pictures just moving the camera a little bit here, a little bit there, changing the focus, uh, focus on these two little shells here, or move the focus over to the rocks a little bit further in the distance, and just enjoy what you're doing. Just enjoy the time of being there, and then you'll be surprised what kind of pictures you get when you get home. Ray, I have a question. Yeah? Is What does the weather tend to be like there? I've, I've never been. Is it is it typically very moody, or do you get... Yeah. You know, they, they say if you want rainy days, go to England. <laughs> uh, right now, you know, it, it changes. I know the global warming, and I'm not going to get into that, but when I was young, I'm, I'm coming up to 70 now, but when I was young, we had winters where there was always snow. I had a sledge, and we would be out, uh, even on the beach, there would be snow, but I haven't seen snow in the northeast England here now for years and years. We just get this miserable, freezing rain. Um, mm. And I haven't seen a red sky, really a really nice red sky in the morning for months and months and months. Uh, so I don't know what's happened. Now, Bill Wood will be happy to ship you some snow. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, Boy, that's true. <laughs> I'll ship you some sunshine. There you yeah, go. Yeah, we I've got a buddy who's up in Detroit, and uh, he's out every day with a snow plow in his garden. So. Yeah, he, we've got snow on the ground. Not for me. I don't mind the rain. You can keep the snow. <laughs> but I'm out in the rain. I, I, I go out and shoot in all kinds of weather. It's just a case of getting yourself wrapped up so you don't get cold. Um, the pictures are different, obviously, but that's why you do it. Just protect right. your camera. Right. How do you keep your lens from getting um, water spots? Yeah, I carry a number of cloths. I have, a, have you ever seen those uh, swimmers' towels? They're about a foot square, but they absorb moisture really good and they're very soft. Yes. I have two, I have two of those uh, that take the initial moisture off the lens because they're always getting splashed. And then I use these softer tissue. Um, 
to get a little polish back on the lens. So, but when you're shooting with, on the beach and you're going to do uh, clean your lens, be very careful there's no sand, because sand will scratch the glass. Um, so look at it very carefully. Don't just dab a cloth and then start rubbing. If, got, if you've got sand in there, it will ruin a good lens. Just be careful. Um, lenses are expensive. Absorbent uh, towel uh, is, is the thing to use, and then a soft uh, microfiber cloth. Or don't let it get wet in the first place. Well, and how, how do you take care of your gear? Like in between, you're always out there at the ocean. So, are you constantly like cleaning your camera and your lenses on the outsides? You know, the um, not just the lenses. How do you deal with that regularly? Well, my, my Sony A77 is weatherproof. It's sealed. It, it's sealed against the light rain and splashes and moisture. You wouldn't want to drop it in the water because it would. But it, it's it's Sony says it's weather sealed. I uh, have no idea what that actually means. I mean, is it a hurricane weather sealed or a warm breeze weather sealed? But it, it, it's working, and I'm out there every day, and the camera's now about four years old. <coughs> uh, when you had it back to Sony once to get it repaired, and it had nothing to do with moisture, it was the on off button stopped working. Mm. The shutter button. Uh, this is a picture of the sun, it's uh, just above the horizon. Again, one of those days when the, the the sky turns red and we get everything else turns red. And these rocks are, are a reddish colour, so when the light and the and the sun hits them, they really do go. But I shot this one because of the cloud reflection. You can see that on the top right, you've got this little blotchy little red cloud, and it's reflecting in the water down here, <coughs> and the houses reflecting across the beginning of the. Uh, the water right there. Composition wise is uh, so slow, but it's nice for the colors. I just love this one. I just love those reflections. There's a, a low tide. Uh, we get spring tides here a couple of times a year where the, the water goes way, way out, and uh, you can walk out for about two football fields and barely be up to your knees in the water. And seagulls love it, and they will just stand around on the rocks of the little sand pits. And uh, when I was walking along the beach looking, and I noticed how the light was lighting up, this, uh, they're standing on a little sand bit there. It's about an inch or so deep, and maybe another four or five inches around it, where the water gets a bit darker. Uh, again, shooting for the light. Um, Seagulls, when they get like that, if you don't scare them, they'll stand fairly still and pose for you. So, yeah. I like shooting seagulls. Yeah, that's gorgeous. I like this one. I really like the light. There are a group of little girls here. They look like they've got a cell phone up there and taking a selfie picture of themselves on the other beat. I uh, don't do a lot of shots where you get. Uh, people in so prominently, but uh, you know, these girls look quite nice stepping across this water. Uh, but again, I'm shooting this because of the light on the shadows on the, uh, the sand and the rocks at the foreground. Uh, this is a sort of setting off to my, actually they're pointing their camera right at the sunset because it was very nice, um, but it's not a nice picture because all of us there as houses, there's no trees or anything. So you, the sun goes down behind the houses. And for me, it's not a good composition. So they're probably taking the picture. They're taking the picture of the sunset of themselves, probably themselves. But shooting for the light. Again, light and shadows in the water. That's what I do when I'm out on the beach, looking for the little things. This curve of this rock at the front, uh, where it goes from dark to light, and then the chimney pots uh, sticking down into the uh, the water there. Colours and light. I call this big rock. Uh, locally, it's called Charlie's Garden, and it's at Coleywell Bay, a little, about a mile further up the beach from where the uh, lighthouse is. It's a pebble beach, so I do a lot of shooting here. I sit down on the pebbles and I let the water come right up, and it washes over my legs and stuff. And my camera's on its tripod, buried into the gravel. Um, about a foot or so above the above the water, 
And I'm always careful of the way a bigger than us don't come in and swap the camera. There's always some seaweed gathered around. I cheated a little bit here. I put this uh, big lump of seaweed in front of me with my feet, so I kicked it into that long line. So it would give me a foreground to shoot the big rock in the distance. Again, this is dawn. Um, so there's just risen off to just off picture to the right. It's probably about 30 minutes above the horizon. Nobody else around. I've got this little beach to myself. <laughs> This is a little bit south of uh, my favourite beach. This is a uh, time of long sand. You've got the old priory up here in the distance. There's a ruin on the cliff, and then that building in front of it is the Coast Guard uh, uh, station there. And this is the North Sea Ferry coming in from Amsterdam into the river time. And uh, the rocks at the beginning uh, of the beach. Um, sun is about an hour above the horizon, just off to my left hand uh, side of the picture here. I don't have it in the picture, but uh, the light is there. Foreground, middle ground, and background uh, for the composition. This is a favorite kind of shot of mine. Uh, this is just at the end of a fairly stormy uh, night. This again is dawn. The sun is just above the horizon there. We are looking east here. And uh, when we get storms on my beach, we get a lot of frothy sea foam. Um, so it gathers around the rocks. And this is what I was shooting, trying to get the focus on the little bubbles and the color and the light um, on the foam there. Uh, it's a bit of green seaweed uh, on this rock. The rock is about probably the size of a Labrador dog, um, so it's not, a, it's not a huge rock. But shooting for the bubbles and, uh, and uh, catching the light and the shadows. Haven't seen a red sky like that for a long time. Uh, this is a shot from Naples Beach in Florida. Uh, I used to live in the Everglades, uh, and they have a lot of these breakwaters, and this one had broken, and that's what it looked a bit like a shipwreck. Um, that's why I shot that picture. But you won't get a blue sea like that uh, from my beach. Uh, this is a Florida Gulf of Mexico kind of uh, a beach. Temperature 80 degrees right there. Mm. Gorgeous uh, sunrise here. Yeah? Not a lot of uh, objects on the beach to shoot, but I went for this piece of seaweed uh, left from the, from the wave of tide as it goes out. But look at these soft flimsy kind of clouds that show up as dark shadows on the across the sky there and the darker clouds on the horizon. A little ship out there, there's always seems to be a ship in the picture. And the sun just peeping out above the uh, the clouds. Plain simple picture, nothing special about it. It's the colour and the light that uh, that gives it its beauty. Uh, the causeway across to the lighthouse. Uh, this is the tide coming in. Uh, you can't, well, you can. It's about ways deep to walk across here because I used to go scuba diving not that many years ago. Uh, but if the water is rough, uh, trying to cross this causeway would be very dangerous. These waves would knock you off, and once you get off either side of that causeway, you're neck deep in the water, and it gets. It would be very difficult to get on. But I've shot this by being patient and waited for a wave to come across the causeway and rush off this edge. <clears throat> and all my focus is right here on this corner where the water is uh, rushing off. Julia can sit there and take pictures, hundreds of pictures, and they'll all be different because every wave seems to do something different when it comes onto the causeway. Beautiful sky. I haven't seen a one like this in a long time. The sun is just there above the horizon. And I was the only photographer there that morning. Uh, there's normally quite a few. Beautiful. And Ray, we've just got a few minutes left. How much do you have left? Can you just tell me when it's time? I'll just keep going through. A long distance shot on the beach, uh, gone for the color of the light. There's the sun setting off to the left. A couple of little pe people contrasting very nicely with the, the whiteness and the water. And there's Sort of like a black and white picture with a bit of colour. A grey day, a very grey day. This is my Cody Well Bay again, the Pebble Beach. Long exposure shots at one third or one quarter of a second. And just trying to get the water coming over the little rocks. Uh, 
beautiful sky. Makes the picture is that little swirl of the uh, clouds and that's just uh, after sunrise. There's some people walking along Seaton's Road with a beach with their dogs. There's nearly always somebody out there walking their dog and they do make uh, good additions into your picture. But look at this big black stormy cloud that's come across and gone out to sea, dropping its rain out there on the horizon. Uh, it had gone over me and uh, I just sat still and waited until it comes. The, the, the rain doesn't last long. Half an hour and this, these clouds move away. I really like the feel of this one, the people on the beach and the nice warm tones. Yeah, it, 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 then you've yeah. got the blue sky up above. Yeah. Yeah, there's people out in the light there. And, you know, just be patient. Somebody will walk across a light spot soon or later. Some of the kind of picture looking out to my lighthouse from my favorite beach. People way in the distance here walking their pets. And again, shot for the four might here. Um, again, I'm shooting this. This is F8, and I'm focused on the uh, the point uh, right where the sort of water is. Uh, the, the little curve, right in the middle of the picture there. And that gives me the uh, sharpness on this 4D bubbles. But that gives the leading line. We should always have some kind of leading line. Uh, Taking the people out to the people where they are. Up there. This is looking the other way on the beach. Uh, sunset. The uh, the sun is about an hour or so before setting. It's just uh, up here off the picture, and uh, I've emphasized these beams a little bit with Photoshop, but that's how it looked, and the sky was that reddy color, um, and that's how you get this light in the in the in the wet sand. And I was patient and waited for this wave to bring this uh, the water right in so it would fill up this empty space at the front and make a nice focal point for the picture. That's beautiful. Ray, I think uh, that picture is really great. Uh, I love yeah. the sunbeams. Uh, why, don't, why don't we uh, end on that one? I think that's a good one to end on. Okay, thank you for listening, listening to me. and It's been a pleasure showing my work off. And I love the I love the colors there in the wet sand. That's I think you do that better than anybody that I know of, is uh, capturing that wet sand, all the beauty that is there. I'm um, just looking marvelous that I have such a beautiful beach to do it on. Oh, I think it's more than just the beach. I really do. <laughs> I kind of think it's the photographer out there on the beach as well. Well, we appreciate it, Ray. Uh, and I think there's a couple things uh, that you can really learn from Ray, and um, you know, and one of them, one of them's just you got to be out there um, and be patient and persistent. And yeah, persistent. That's exactly it. So we appreciate it, Ray. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do the uh, our recommended photographers um, to end out the show here. So let me share my screen, and we'll start doing that. And uh, this is my recommended photographer. This is Amanda Moore, and I just actually saw her uh, a couple weeks ago for the first time, and uh, thought she did a, a really nice job on some photos. Um, she's got a lot of beach shots, and uh, this uh, this type of shot that you know really really great composition and and technical mm -hmm. photo. So uh, I think you'll enjoy her. Uh, Photos. She's from Australia, so go check her out. Yeah. How are you? And then, uh, my choice. Who, who was this? This was Bill, Me. right? Me. Oh, sorry, Pamela. No. Pamela. <laughs> <laughs> Me over here. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is a Marcelo de Castro, and um, I believe this shot was from Iceland. Yeah, um, I just actually really discovered him today. I was looking around and, and was like, oh, hey, this looks interesting. So I followed one of his photos. And then there was like a gold mine when I looked at his profile. I just the, the photos are just beautiful. I love the colors. I love how he the light and how he processes them. And there's just a feeling of serenity, I think, in all of his photos, which really appeals to me. And um, you know, they're they're always interesting and composed well and just a delight to look at. Beautiful. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful stuff. I'm definitely going to check him out. <laughs> and then Bill. Uh, I've chosen Ella K for, for something different, uh, not on the beach theme, 
Um, she does flowers and she does composites, and I really love the the vibrancy of the colors that she uses. It's just wonderful to me. And then the uh, the next picture is a composite that's a, actually a landscape composite with a beautiful butterfly in there, and I really love her work. So she's my choice. Very creative. Great. Thank you, Bill. And then we've got uh, Margaret, your choice. Uh, this is Nicholas Doak, and he's one of our new moderators in the landscape photography community. Uh, we're very privileged to have him come on aboard. Uh, he does wonderful landscapes. This is kind of a macro uh, mini landscape. These little mushrooms or whatever they are, I just I think it's gorgeous. It looks like a carving or something. Uh, but he does um, uh, a very wide variety of work. And this other one that you'll see is a more traditional landscape. Uh, there where he's just really captured the lushness of the forest there with the river below. Uh, but do check him out. Um, uh, he does wonderful, wonderful work. I think he's a photographer you'll enjoy following. Great. Wonderful selections. Uh, we appreciate everyone uh, joining us. And uh, um, if you know someone that didn't wasn't able to join live, uh, we'll have the links available uh, basically right after the show it, it's available on YouTube and uh, let everyone know um, and we'll be back in two weeks with another show and Kevin uh, just a heads up over in the landscape uh, photography community uh, we have an event open now on reflections so you can go and share your favorite reflection photograph uh, uh, Ray, maybe we'll share one of his uh, to that event, but that's I over in the. One out just for you, Margaret. <laughs> okay, wonderful, uh, but that's over in the landscape photography community that we have that event going. Yeah, perfect, and everyone everyone loves a good reflection and has a good reflection shot. So, head on over, and with that, uh, we'll tell uh, Ray thank you again, and uh, good night. Thank you, Ray. Good night. Good night, everybody.